You know, Ole Miss could be the favorite right now to land Deuce Knight. You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, a 10-year veteran member of the national media and a former Ole Miss staff member. Today, we're talking about how Ole Miss could be taking the momentum away from Auburn for quarterback recruit Deuce Knight of George County. Many had assumed he was going to Auburn. He was an Auburn lock, but after a disastrous Saturday loss and former Hugh Freeze speaking out, things have shifted a little bit. Lane Kiffin's season opening, especially with his track record of developing quarterbacks, the next two weeks are shaping up to be really exciting for Rebel Nations, potentially. Let's see what happens over the next couple of weeks. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day, and a special hello to the insiders and everydayers who make this show what it is. And do not forget to find a second listen on the network. Chris Gordy at Locked On SEC and Corey Burton at Locked On Vandy provide other great perspectives on college football, the SEC, and heck, even Ole Miss. So check it out. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place a $5 bet and you'll be started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. So it's really interesting. Like the past weekend was Deuce Knight's third trip. I think it was an official visit as well to the Auburn Tigers and on the Plains out there. And Auburn did not have a good day. Hugh Freeze really attacked his quarterbacks after the game and did all of that. Bo Wallace, one of Hugh Freeze's former players, came out talking about things that he saw as wrong as far as throwing players under the bus. And it is bad. It is getting toxic in Auburn, Alabama right now. And so I called my people out in Alabama. It's like, hey, what's going on? What's happening right now? And he's like, it's not good here right now. It's just not. They're trying to change the narrative again. They've been banging the drum about recruiting over the past couple of weeks. And they have been assuming for the last six weeks that they were going to land Deuce Knight. And everybody thought after this official visit, it was probably a slam dunk. So much so, the on three recruiting list had Auburn at a 92% chance of landing him, even though he is a Notre Dame commit. This is a weird recruitment, to say the least. But I called him and I was like, well, how do you feel right now after the official visit? And he's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. This is, It's gotten weird over here. The momentum feels like it stopped in the Deuce Knight recruiting. And honestly, I'm telling people in Auburn that he's going to end up at Ole Miss. So I'm not reporting that he's going to end up at Ole Miss. I'm reporting about what I'm hearing out of my people in Auburn. Like I said, I worked 10 years at Yahoo Sports at Rivals.com. I have connections on the recruiting side of the coin. Um, Brian Smith, the locked on recruiting expert, he is somebody that has talked about this, and he mentioned the Ole Miss angle early on in this whole Auburn stuff that popped up. It feels like those cards are starting to turn a little bit, especially with what Jackson Dart and Ole Miss's offense is doing currently. If Ole Miss's offense can keep it up over the next couple of weeks leading into signing day, I don't think there's any reason to doubt the fact that Ole Miss could end up getting Deuce Knight, Caleb Cunningham, and possibly A.K. Deer just speculating on what's going on. If Ole Miss continues the run that they are currently on, I can see how they end up with those three players. But Deuce Knight is a really special athlete. He's out of George County, Mississippi, and we're going to look at his star rankings and all of that in just a second. But he is somebody that has improved drastically leading into this season and has gotten to the point where he's kind of an it quarterback, a top 50 level quarterback at the moment, and he deserves it. He is six foot five. He is running a 4'4, 4'3, and has about a 42 inch vertical jump. When you want to call this guy a freak athlete, this is what you mean and the numbers that he puts up all the time. So there's a reason that Lane Kiffin 
is only recruiting one quarterback. And this is the only quarterback that he is recruiting. If he does not sign a quarterback, he'll probably pick somebody up in the transfer portal to simply back up Austin Simmons. But as far as a high school player that they're willing to put a lot of effort into and follow him into signing day, it's this guy or nobody. He is the only high school quarterback that they are recruiting. Lane Kiffin at his press conference on Monday mentioned his relationship that he's developed with Jackson Dart and told the story about how when Matt Corral had a really bad game at Arkansas where he threw six interceptions, this is how he handled it. He was like, hey, you did it. We have to clean it up. We have to get right. But don't worry. You're my guy. We will take care of it. We made some mistakes and some calls. You will be absolutely fine. And he got to the press conference and talked about, hey, we need to coach a little bit better. We need to make better calls. We need to do what we can to secure this quarterback because he's doing this the right way. The mistakes and the six interceptions, a lot of them rely on us. Arkansas got us. Barry Odom got us. That is what happened in that scenario. And Lane Kiffin breaking that out the Monday after this past weekend, after Hugh Freeze publicly threw Hank Brown, a redshirt freshman, under the bus. Peyton Thorne has lived under the bus, and I think Walker White's going to end up taking reps there by the end of the year. This is at least giving Deuce Knight pause and reason to consider what is going on in Oxford, Mississippi. I do not think Notre Dame is going to eventually be in the end and where he's going to end up because according to the Auburn people I've talked to, they haven't necessarily been recruiting him for two or three weeks at this point. You know, Notre Dame has their rule was like, if you're committed to us, you can't take visits um, elsewhere. So technically if that's happening and that rule happens in their eyes or in Deuce Knight's eyes, he's not committed because he took an uh, official visit to the Auburn Tigers. So let's see over the next couple of three weeks, because I imagine the Georgia game is going to be a who's who of players. You'll have A.K. Deer, Caleb Cunningham, um, Deuce Knight, all of the players, Shakai Mills Knight, all of the players are going to come up for that game. I expect that. But will he make another one in Oxford, Mississippi? Now, in a situation like this, as bad as it's going to be, there's some leverage for the high school process prospect for Auburn to up their offer. So that is absolutely on the table. And from what I understand, their offer is pretty good to begin with anyway. But the way it stands, if you want to look at what Ole Miss has going on, they they might be in the driver's seat right now for him because of what Jackson Dart is doing offensively at the moment, what it looks like that you can be at the quarterback position. Jackson Dart is a Heisman-type candidate, the offense being the number one offense in all of college football. Honestly, I've described this before. And with Austin Simmons, Austin Simmons might be that guy. I'm fully admitting that as well. But Jackson Dart feels like Deshaun Watson at Clemson, to where you're going to try and make that run to get all of it. You're trying to win everything, to win it all. And then when Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence kind of steps in. And that is where it gets really interested. You know, Travis Etienne and Trevor Lawrence playing quarterback for Clemson with that defense and everything that is lined up. There are some similarities that I think you can take away from these two teams. We'll see exactly how it happens. You know, with the transfer portal, there's a lot more volatility and the ability to go up and down. But I think Ole Miss has a legit chance to win it all this year. and. They could they could string that together with an excellent recruiting class to become a monster down the road. I think that is a excellent potential type thing, and we'll see how it goes. But Deuce Knight, I think Ole Miss might lead for a signature right now. Like I said, I'm not reporting it or anything like that, but it's just the dumpster fire that is going on at Auburn right now. Caleb Cunningham was on an official visit there this weekend, and he just flat out said, "No, nah, this isn't what I wanted to see." It is not a good place that they want to be in. Now, propaganda-wise, they're going to try and figure out how to turn it around, and there's certain things that they can do. But as it sits right now, I think Ole Miss has all the momentum to get a signature in December. And it wouldn't surprise me if Ole Miss ended up signing him, Caleb Cunningham, and A.K. Deer. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Ole Miss got all three of those at this point. We'll see. There's still eight games in the season left to go, and there's still lots of ups and downs that can happen. But right now, it's looking 
pretty good for Ole Miss. Get ready, Rebel fans. This Saturday, Ole Miss takes on Kentucky, and we've got all the key players that you need to be watching for. Don't miss which could be a season-defining game because this is a pretty good defensive team. If Ole Miss puts up numbers against this defense, they can put up numbers against everybody's defense. So tune in for all the insider details. It is time to highlight my Roy Player of the Week. You know, download Roy on iOS or Android and enter referral code LOCKED ON. That's two words. And you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. This week, we've selected Trey Harris because of his dominant 11 catch, 225 yards, and two touchdowns game against Georgia Southern this weekend. He is the best receiver in all of the country. So I am giving Trey Harris $100 on Roy. If you were impressed as we were with his performance on Saturday, you can show him some love too. Just hop on Roy and show him a few bucks. The minimum to donate is $10. If everybody pitches in just $10, it adds up fast for Trey Harris. So now you have the chance to show your appreciation for Trey Harris and the standout performance this week, as what he will, as well as what he will continue to do to bring to your program. So get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find the right professionals for the role. That's why I always turn into turn to LinkedIn Jobs. They make it so easy to connect with a quality candidate quickly and effectively. And the best part, it's free. When I've needed to fill a key role, I've found that LinkedIn Jobs connects people that I wouldn't have found anywhere else. It's not just a job board. It, LinkedIn helps you tap into a net, network of professionals that you might that might not actually be looking for a new job, but might be open to the right opportunity. And honestly, that's where the magic happens. For example, when I was searching for someone to help grow my team, LinkedIn Jobs helped me get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. The platform is tailored for finding professionals who are a perfect fit for the role, even if they're not actively scouring the job boards every single day. If you're looking on LinkedIn, and you're not looking on LinkedIn, I should say, you might be looking in the wrong place and miss out on that perfect hire. Ready to make the next great hire? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. So let's get into the What the Watch For episode um, stuff of this broadcast. These are the three things in this game that I think everybody needs to be paying attention to. Um, the Ole Miss defensive line versus the Kentucky offensive line. I think that's the area that they're going to need to exploit. And that is where the separation between these two teams are really going to take off. That Ole Miss defensive line has a chance to really affect that Kentucky offensive line that has struggled to the point where Kentucky was three for 10 against South Carolina throwing the football because they could not block South Carolina's defensive line. I think Ole Miss has three players that would start at South Carolina. So this is their opportunity to show what's going on. Second of all, Lane Kiffin is really excited for this game because he finally gets to do what he does best, and that is scheming. Whenever you look at a formation and figure out what could work and how to make things happen, all of that scheming comes in very handy. And with the analysts like Joe Judge, Zach Arnett, and even Brian Brown, you get the idea that during this game, there could be a lot of scheming going on, and we could see some things that we haven't seen to this point in the season. And third of all, we know don't know how good Ole Miss is offensively, but we know how good UK is at the moment. Ole Miss could be a generationally elite offense. Their ceiling is absolutely the best offense in the history of college football. Their floor is just a great offense, but we don't know exactly where Ole Miss hits on that scale. We know that Kentucky is a good defense, though. They held Georgia to just 13 points a couple of weeks back. So this will be an excellent test to see what can happen. The Ole Miss offensive line blocking the Kentucky defensive line. The Kentucky front seven against the Ole Miss basically inside run area. And then you have the secondary battle that's going to happen between Trey Harris and Juice Wells and the Kentucky Wildcats. So that is the three things that you probably need to watch for in this game. And we're going to start off talking about that defensive line. 
the defensive line has been the bell cow of this football team since, um, honestly, the spring. That's all that anybody has been able to talk about. And that is because with Walter Nolan, he is an elite defensive lineman. He is going to draw a double team every single play. J.J. Pegues is turning into a game wrecker himself, leading the team in tackles for loss. Whenever you look at those two, you're getting close to that point where you're going to have to double team those guys because they are the closest to the quarterback and you want to make sure they get blocked, which means that you're going to get single coverage on the outside. And that happened against South Carolina and Dylan Stewart was able to eat a little bit and he caused problems on the outside, which caused Kentucky to do things a little bit differently to protect up. South Carolina ended up with like 11 tackles for loss and five sacks in that game. Kentucky had four sacks and 13 tackles for loss. We always talk about Kentucky's defense. Those guys are legit. But you're going to have a situation that Prince Liam Ami Ellen gets single blocked from time to time or the running back kind of chips the defensive end on his way out. And a tight end could be on a Sunter and Perkins or if Ole Miss switches out J.J. Pegues for Xavion Harris, that is an avenue as well. The Ole Miss front seven is going to be really important. And Prince Liam Ami Ellen, he got graded out with like 24 impactful plays by PFF through the first four games. That's about six per game. And his production numbers are growing up steadily. He has eight tackles, um, three tackles for loss, and two sacks so far this season. He had an unbelievable caused interception against Georgia Southern. He had a sack in that game as well. He was a menace on the outside. And you mix him and Chris Paul, Chris Pooh Paul, you're getting kind of a, I don't know, a combination that plays pretty well off of each other between Chris Paul and Suntaran Perkins or Jared Ivey. You're able to move him around as an outside, true outside linebacker to kind of play games with whoever is playing at defensive end. And I, I talked about in the preseason about how Pete Golding is really good at scheming up ways to get defensive linemen, especially defensive ends, open and opportunities to affect the game. Explosive plays happen all the way back to Pete Golden's time with Demarcus Davenport at UTSA. That's just something that he's always been able to do. Will Anderson became a top five pick because of Pete Golding. I mean, the talent's there, but the scheme helped. But here's the key. You have that ability to scheme that up with a Zach Arnett playing on the second level who is really good at scheming up explosive opportunity for some linebackers. And Brian Brown is really good at scheming up explosive opportunities for defensive backs. You see what I'm saying right now. So this time in this game, you should start to see a little bit of schematic stuff happening to where you're starting to work these defensive linemen and get one-on-ones at different places. Walter Nolan is going to get a double team every single time. That is non-negotiable. His numbers may not be what you expected to be, but trust me, he is affecting the game. The second double team is the important part. Are they going to choose to do Prince Liam Mommy Ellen? Are they going to choose to do J.J. Pegues? If it's J.J. Pegues, you get that magic formula of both defensive ends about to be able to get after the quarterback and the defensive lineman covering up the linebackers as well. T.J. Dottery, Chris Pupal, important roles in this six-man front. We call it a front seven, but it's a six-man front. So we'll see. And the players up near the line of scrimmage playing at that jack or husky position that are the hybrid players are going to be very important as well. So we'll see. And it should be a whole lot of fun because this defensive line has a chance to do some work against the Kentucky offensive line. Now, I expect the ball to get out of Brock Vandegrift's hands quickly for Dane Key and Barry and Brown. I expect Kentucky to run the ball at least a little bit to keep Ole Miss honest. Ole Miss is giving up about a yard per game rushing at this point, and most of that is happening on the last drives of the game. Ole Miss run defense right now is absolutely elite based off of who they've played. But we'll see. I, I know that Kentucky wants to at least test Ole Miss's secondary. When you look at Ole Miss's secondary, you have to think that you have to try to try and make plays. 
And the way they're going to do that is through RPOs in the middle of the field that we've seen Wake Forest do, that we've seen Georgia Southern do, that we've seen um, Middle Tennessee do, if we want to be honest about it. But I think that there's going to be a duck and chuck um, measure to their offense as well, where they drop back three steps and throw it up in the air and hope for a penalty where two or three ten things can be wrong happening to Ole Miss's defense. And it's going to be on the Ole Miss's defense to get quick, instantaneous pressure against that offensive line. Kentucky, obviously, is the best football team that Ole Miss has played this season. It's the second-best defense that they're going to see right behind Georgia. They're giving up only 215 or so yards per game. And in that South Carolina game that they got beat 31-3, to that wasn't the defense's fault. That was on the offense. That was completely on the offense. Defensively, they only gave up 13 first downs and 215 yards. But they gave up 31 points, so everybody looks at it, oh, they could be problem defensively. No, this is a really good defensive football team. And because of that, you need to figure out ways to exploit those guys, and Lane Kiffin loves these type of games. This is the type of game that Lane Kiffin lives for. So watch as he puts his offensive genius on full display, unleashing every trick play in his playbook. Not necessarily trick plays, but it's going to be plays designed to take advantage of what Kentucky does. Can Ole Miss dominate with Kiffin's scheme-driven attack? Do not miss it. Hey, NFL fan, fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. It is the place to bet on which side of Ole Miss being 17 and a half point favorites, I think it is, um, over the Kentucky Wildcats for Saturday's game, or the over-under, which is at a 51 and a half line, something like that. I mean, Ole Miss would have covered that line by themselves over three of their four first four games. So we'll see exactly how that goes. So when you get a hunch like this in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, you can view the live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same place that you visit the bets that you place the bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Really interesting stuff. And I was talking about that, and I, I meant that. This is the type of game that Lane Kiffin loves. Absolutely loves. To where his scheme is going to be so important. And these are the type games where he can kind of make his name, for lack of a better word. Kentucky has a really good defensive football team. When you look at where Kentucky is right now, they're giving up less total yards per game than Ole Miss, and everybody has talked about Ole Miss over the last four weeks as a potentially elite defense. Ole Miss has given up like 230 yards a game. They're giving up like 210, something like that. So Lane Kiffin is going to have to scheme against this defense, and Lane Kiffin's going to love it. You're, you would normally, this is a game that you would see whistles in when Lane Kiffin gets something that he's looking for to let Jackson Dart know. Now he can just say it in the headset to where he doesn't even have to whistle. But this is the game similar to everybody. Does everybody remember that 2020 Ole Miss Alabama game to where Ole Miss had no business playing with that Alabama team? None whatsoever. But they were able to do it because of the way that Ole Miss schemed up the run game and the pass game and all of that. And Jackson Dart right now is completing nearly 80% of his passes at 95 for 119. 1,554 yards. That's like 300 yards more than the second place person in the SEC right now. 12 touchdowns, two interceptions. This is a guy that has a chance to scare the ever loving heck out of Kentucky in this ball game. And that is because of the receivers that you have on the outside. Trey Harris, we mentioned him as our Roy player of the week against Georgia Southern. He's averaging nearly 10 catches a year, a game. He's averaging about 1,500 yards per game, or 160 yards per game, I'm sorry, and four touchdowns. He's simply the best player in college football right now at the wide receiver position, is a hands down Fred Blentnikoff Award winner if they're going to be serious about it. This is somebody that could put up numbers this year that will not be touched by an Ole Miss wide receiver after this. We always like to talk about unbreakable statistics. He is on the path to that. 
if he ends up with 110 catches, 18, 1900 yards receiving and 12 touchdowns, he has a chance to have a season that's a GOAT level season in Ole Miss football. But on the other side is Juice Wells. He only has 14 catches on the season, but he's averaging nearly 20 yards per catch. He has 274 yards, four touchdowns himself. He is somebody that is the big playmaker, the take the top off the defense maker. He is somebody that is doing a lot of good things for Ole Miss football. And when you look at the running back field, Henry Parrish, already 427 yards, averaging over 100 yards a game so far, 57 carries, seven touchdowns as well. Ole Miss, as everybody knows by now, is a run-first team. Now they're passing the ball a little bit more right now because of how good they are, but Henry Parrish is allowing that to happen. Lane Kiffin has the opportunity to get to scheme up against this defense and do some of the things that he really enjoys doing because we don't really know how good this Ole Miss offense is at the moment. This offense's ceiling is the best offense in the history of college football, period. There's no way to get around that. But this offense's floor is just a great offense, a little bit better probably than they were a year ago, and still a very good offense that's probably going to be number one in the SEC. But historically, that is the calendar that um, the ceiling of which we can look at this offense. And Kiffin being able to scheme up with a third-year quarterback with those weapons they have, they have a chance to do a lot against a defense that is really, really good. Like I said, this is the second-best defense that Ole Miss is going to see this whole season. And they're going to come in ready to play. And Kentucky, for whatever reason, likes to travel to Oxford. And the last time they got here, by the way, was the week that Hurricane Ian hit Florida and went right over my house. Now there's another hurricane spinning up in the Gulf that's supposed to go by a little bit west of us, but we're going to get tropical force winds. It's supposed to be a stripe out this Saturday. Go to College Corner to get that information. And by the way, College Corner has also got the new Realtree Galaxy tumblers, and they're getting more informa- more product all the time. So check them out on Cisco Avenue in Oxford, Mississippi, collegecornerstore.com. But when you look at all the stuff and all the similarities between now and 2022, you can see it. The difference is 2022 had Will Levis, and they were a better offensive team. They still have Barry and Brown and Dane Key and a lot of good players, but they're not quite at the level they have been. But this is a game that if Mark Stoops is allowed to set the tempo and the tone of this game, Kentucky can beat Ole Miss. I don't care about the point spread. Kentucky has the talent to beat Ole Miss. If Barry and Brown gets loose, if Ole Miss has a bad game on special teams, if they do not clean up the penalties, if they give up hidden yardage in the return game, all of a sudden you look up and Kentucky might be down 16 to 13 in the fourth quarter and everybody's going to be like, what's going on? The reason that I know that they can do that is they did that to Georgia. And if they can do it to that roster of the Georgia Bulldogs, they can do it to Ole Miss. So we'll see exactly what that looks like in this test of what Ole Miss can do against the Kentucky Wildcats. But these are the things that you need to watch for. Going over it again, the Ole Miss defensive line versus the Kentucky offensive line. If Ole Miss can recreate what South Carolina did against them, Ole Miss is going to win the game fairly simply. Lane Kiffin's probably excited about this game because he finally gets to do what he loves to do. And this is going to be a game that tells us exactly what the ceiling of this Ole Miss offense really is. Because right now, the ceiling is the best offense in all of the history of college football. But it might just be the number one offense in the SEC. There's not really a bad thing that can happen, but that is an option. Thank you for making the Lockdown Ole Miss podcast your go-to source For Ole Miss Sports, we pride ourselves on offering the most comprehensive perspectives, which is why we're the number one Ole Miss podcast. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day. Now go check out the Locked On On College Football podcast. From NIL deals to never-ending conference realignment rumors, Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron. You can find the link to Locked On College Football in the description down below so you don't even need to search for it. They're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Exciting news. You can now become a Locked On Ole Miss Insider, the best and easiest way to stay updated on all things Ole Miss sports. Our texting program sends you notifications 
on everything relevant without the hassle of message boards filled with trolls. Enjoy a 14-day free trial, experience the future of college sports coverage, and we're adding new perks as we grow, so do not miss out. The link is down in the description as well. For those of you watching on YouTube, we will send you to Locked On College Sports right now. Howdy toddy, everyone.